Good morning, everyone. So it's a real pleasure to be here uh, today. It's my first time in India, uh, and uh, I can feel since yesterday how vibrant Mumbai is. And based on what I've heard yesterday, and I'm sure today uh, will be the same, uh, there's exciting times coming for out of home in India. So definitely looking forward to uh, crack the 4% uh, glass ceiling together. So um, maybe before I start, I'd like to thank I mean, um, the team of Exchange for Media uh, for the invitation. Uh, and before I uh, invite you to join me uh, to travel the world with actually uh, sharing how your counterparts, out of home and digital out of home players, have been getting back to growth after COVID and also preparing themselves to tap into future growth, just allow me to introduce you who we are very briefly. So I need to get the, okay, here yeah, we go. It works. So QVD, we actually the leading and audience measurement solution dedicated for digital out of home and retail media. So we've been around since seven years. We actually started the space out of France. So we're a French company. And today we've been serving hundreds of clients around the world uh, with our six sales office in New York, in London, in Barcelona, in Europe, and also serving APAC through Singapore, Taiwan, and Sydney in Australia. So as you can see here, we have actually a wide range of clients in out of home space from leading shopping mall uh, in US or Australia like Westfield, you know, a preferred brand in Australia. Uh, or uh, you will recognize, you know, uh, Ahots in UK, I'm sure, or Middle East, Al Arabia uh, are also uh, our client. But we're also operating in what we call food retail, and you'll know more about that space later on, like 7-Eleven in Taiwan, where we are powering 7,000 screens for more than 12 years, or, uh, you know, uh, CVS or Kroger, I mean, uh, the top uh, grocers in, in US. And last but not least, we're also present in outdoor, so no matter we talk about clear channel bus shelters in Singapore uh, or uh, Electromedia, number one uh, transportation network in Brazil, uh, but also actually the iconic big billboard in Piccadilly Circus powered by Ocean Outdoor for years with our technology. So next to our blue chip client, we actually are by far uh, the most integrated solution, upstream and downstream. Upstream with Intel, Samsung, our solution can run actually uh, embedded into those screens and players, but also down screen with actually a tech platform like Hivestack, Vista, or Broadstar, where we have built native integration. So today in India, if you guys are interested, we just plug and play, because we are doing that already somewhere else. So that's who we are. And by looking at this variety of network, uh, type of network, actually it has enabled us throughout the years to understand the challenge and the priorities of each type of networks. And based on that, we build specific playbooks to actually help them to transition successfully from slot-based buying, selling, and to audience uh, impression selling. And I will not lie to everybody to say that you just do that in a click, it's not true. It's a journey, so it has to be progressive. And what matters to Quividi over the 17 years where we work to grow this market and drive adoption, in various countries is to be able to help the network to deliver value for growth at each step of the journey, no matter where you are. Okay? And that's very important because we talk about digital out of the home, we talk about war, whatever, but you guys have all a reality and a legacy to deal with. So we cannot ignore that if we want together to drive the adoption and bring value uh, in the run, in the long run. So, so that really matters to us to insist that it is a journey and it is progressive. I'm going to finish with the solution. So basically how the solution works, hope the video works, yeah. So we use video sensors and AI to enable to collect in real time uh, impressions and uh, qualify audiences like age, genders, and engagement. So that's how you know, the solution works with cars, with body, and face detection capabilities. So let me now take you through that journey, like I said, by first starting to share how do we see the growth coming in the space worldwide. We see two major growth drivers right now. The first one, I mean, you saw the introduction, uh, the, the great uh, video from Lema, it's what we call programmatic digital out of home, PDU. So PDU is today the driving force 
uh, of digital out of home. And this is an example of US market. You can see here that actually it's already, it's gonna be 660 million US dollars. So about one fourth of the digital out of home revenue in US this year. But it's not going to stop here because it's gonna continue to grow by more than 30 to 35% year on year to actually reach more than one billion US dollar within less than two years. So what's happening in US is actually happening everywhere else. Just let me share with you, for example, UK, um, it, grow, it will grow 60% this year, PIDU, and reach 120 million, I mean, US dollar this year, counting for more than 10% of the digital out of home uh, revenue this year. In Australia, if you go further, actually eight brands out of um, 10 has already tread programmatically in out of home. And half of them are saying they're gonna to continue to do so regularly. In Japan, closer to us, um, Lifeboard, that you guys may know, uh, it's the leading uh, PIDU uh, platform there, they grow 600% last year. So just a few figures to tell you that the adoption is actually global. So PIDU is growing fast, it's driving the growth in our industry. Now it could grow even faster. How? Thanks to better data, and better targeting capabilities. Those words, you saw them, I mean, just before in Lema's video as well. So real-time uh, audience data, more precise, more accurate, more, I mean, better targeting capabilities to reassure and convince advertisers that digital out-of-home and out-of-home is a place to invest into. And it delivers return on investment. The second key driver, and, and that's the one that, for us, we really have this wow effect when we look at the figures, it's retail media. So I don't know to what extent retail media is getting into India, but I think it's worth to share with you guys that it's really the talk of the town today. I was in New York in January, I was in Europe in February for trade shows, and it's on everybody's lips. So what is retail media? This is an example of online retail media spend in US, uh, where you can see that the figures and the scale of the figures are really not the same. 45, 45 million today, billion today, 20% already this year. And it's gonna grow to above 100. This is only retail media online. Now, what, why do I show you online data when we are talking today about physical world? Because actually what's coming in the in-store retail media, in the physical world where, where we all work hard is actually even more exciting. Because you see here, that the top grocery stores, the Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CVS, they have actually more traffic in store than online. And they realize that it's a huge untapped opportunities for them. So if they want to go and fight and battle against Amazon who own 90% of the retail media online, they have actually a unique place in store their stores, where Amazon is much weaker than they are. It's their sweet spot. So now there's millions and millions of dollars getting into the in-store retail media space in the US. And we see that in Europe as well. It's the same in Australia, okay? In Taiwan, uh, we, we are powering 7-Eleven. They've been doing that 7,000 screen for years. So that is a very interesting um, venue for us. And what does it mean in terms of the way we monetize the screen? in those physical in-store retail media space. It means that they will require more quality data. Why? Because retail media was born online. And as we all know, online today, no matter the challenges they have, honestly have the best data set ever. Simply because they can close the attribution loop. Because all the data online are first party sales data, first party, um, I mean, add uh, audience data. So they can demonstrate to advertisers that when you spend money, what you see as an ad online, actually, how does it translate into what you buy? And that makes them today, you know, in every market where we are, grabbing more than half to 60% of the total media spend. So definitely those brands are willing to spend in the physical space, in store. They're excited, right? Because this is even getting closer to the shoppers. And no matter what we say, 70% of the 
of the purchasing decision is happening in the physical world, despite how e-commerce is growing today. So, of course, they're going to spend dollars there, but they want the same type of quality data because they're used to that. They've been spending billions in online, so they're going to spend also billions in store if you can give them the same data set. So, of course, in store you have sales data, first party sales data, when you're a retailer. So, that's, that's, that's done. Now, what else do you have? Not much. Big question. Because you also need to prove that ad exposure engagement has been done and that it contributes to sales. So basically, what's going, what we see going on is that the retailers will choose audience solution for their in-store retail media that will enable them to gather first-party data that will enable them to prove ad exposure in order to enable attribution, to get closer as possible to the online metrics so that they can speak the same language to advertisers and try to win over omnichannel campaigns. So that's what we see going on, you know, in North America, in some region, in APAC, and in Europe as well. So, like I said, these two growth drivers, PIDU, retail media, are what drive the industry in what we see across the board. Now, to capture the full potential of that, they will demand higher quality data. So I've been talking about quality data. So how do we think we can define a high fidelity data in our space? Four components. It is a first party data. It's a part, it's a data that you guys own and it's unique to your venue. And you are not dependent anymore of whatever third party data that probably with some regulations will be heavily impacted. Like we see in US, in France, because of the privacy laws and the device ID regulation choice, I mean, took by Apple or the big uh, handset manufacturers, they are getting less and less mobile data. So those who build the majority of their, their model based on mobile data today are challenged because they are getting less of that. So then how can you deliver accurate data if your sample just shrinked? So that is a key point. Own and build and nourish your first party data. The second element of first party data for us is has to be closer to what I call the ground truth. So there's no proxy, there's no extrapolation that would be accepted unless it's accurate and proven accurate. That when I count impression or I say I have delivered impression, I actually can prove you that there was people watching that campaign in front of that screen. And because budget are getting scarce, you can imagine how advertisers, I mean, uh, are. It's not only in, in, in India that we see, you know, budget getting scarce, it's all over the place. So ground truth, getting close to that is key. Real time, it's a guarantee somehow, somewhere of ground truth as well, because you can witness as an advertiser into a dashboard, you can access live dashboard, and you can see your impression growing up, so you know people are in front of that screen and engaging with your campaign. So real time is not only reassuring to advertisers in terms of freshness of the data, but it's also, I would say, opening a large opportunity in terms of creativity, in terms of how you can build more effective campaigns, real time, how you can do the same like online, be able to deliver the right content to the right audience at the right moment. So that is what online can bring to you guys. The last is the choice you make because we are in the physical world, it's complicated, okay? It's not like you change a website and you're done. The physical world, you have a screen, you don't move the screen all around like you want. You don't change the cable, you have Wi-Fi connection, all those things issue. So it ha the solution you, you, you invest in, we think it has to be safe for today and tomorrow. So safe for today means that even you don't get yet into programmatic digital out of home. You can still use those quality data to monetize at best your network. Tomorrow, if you want to tap into programmatic do, they are actually the best data you have available to connect the pipe with omnichannel advertising and media budget. It's also tomorrow say, a proof because privacy is coming. So I don't know how much privacy is in India. Uh, in one day, I cannot grasp it, but we French company, I can tell you, GDPR, okay, Privacy Act was born in France and it was officialized in 2018. But QVD, we were already demanded to speak to the authority 
started from 2010. So we're French. So, so I think being able to invest in a solution that make you safe and protect you from being you know, challenged by any privacy regulation, which is going to change later on, it's also you know, something you have to take into account. And last is future-proof, because the day we can tap into omnichannel budget, which are mainly guided by TV standard or online standard, you need to have sophisticated data points. So that it's as frictionless for you as possible. And we will not require new investment or erasing whatever you build to restart whatever and justify the gaps. So that's how we see first party data. Now I'm gonna spend some time to share examples about you know, how our client around the world have been leveraging quality data to drive incremental revenues. Because at the end, it's all about generating more revenues. Okay? It has to make sense. When you invest, it has to make sense that you get back. So just to share with you different type of usage that we see. The first major usage we see is how to create new monetization models based on high fidelity data. So there are different examples, like guaranteed impression. If your data is real time and it's close to the ground truth, you have the capability to guarantee the impression. Like our client, right in March 2020, I remember when COVID strikes in New York, all the Westfield shopping centers shut down. Then they have to reassure advertisers that traffic is back in New York. So they decided to launch guaranteed impression in July 2020, three months after COVID strikes. And they were so surprised that they win over back budget. And today, their media revenue is back to 2019 uh, level, a little bit higher, and it starts to grow. So advertisers feel reassured to come back. And because of that, even now COVID is somehow behind all of us, they decided to, to keep this business model. So they are not selling on slot basis anymore. They keep selling on guaranteed impression because they think it's a unique differentiator versus other, I mean, out of home, digital out of home network in US. The second example closer to us is in Singapore, where Clear Channel is actually selling on audience, by, is selling on audience impression, and advertisers are buying on that base. So I'm gonna spend some time here to share with you, I mean, this Asia First initiative. So they use actually, so they're in bus shelters in Singapore, and they use our footfall and vehicle counting to collect real-time impressions. Then we calculate for them what we call impression multipliers because our media is a, not a one-to-one, -one, it's a one-to-many. So actually, one audience is seeing more content than just one. So it's really pity to underestimate the impression you can deliver. So we provide them impression multipliers, compliant with IAB standard, and they just deliver it seamlessly to HiveStack. Broadsign and Vista. Every day it's automatically pushed in real time whenever an advertiser or an agency is buying inventories of, of, of clear channel bus shelters. So everything just flow in real time. Now there are cases where Quibidis data is not the only data stack used. Okay? So be transparent. There's legacy systems and things like that. So the way some of our clients are doing in Europe, for instance, like in Italy, uh, the major train station uh, network, they use our data as a backbone and they add layers of other data. Why? Because what they're trying to do is to speak the language of TV advertisers, to speak the language of online advertisers so that they can win over part of that budget. So they use our data plus add mobile data or other type of census data to be able to speak that language, GRPs, you know, online metrics, so that they can also tap into that, that omnichannel budget, okay? The second main application we see of high fidelity data is actually campaign effectiveness. So what do we, we call campaign ad effectiveness? This is a study by uh, Nielsen and Catalina in US, where actually the key elements for advertising effectiveness are creative, the quality of the creative, 47%, Rich and brand coming second and third. Now if you look at all those elements, you realize that two-thirds of those elements okay, are actually things you can improve thanks to high fidelity data. Why? Because 
the creative if you know at the very details that this campaign resonate with a specific target audience you can work on the creativity of your campaign moving forward as a marketer if you can in real time trying to personalize and show a more relevant content to the audience in front of that screen at that moment you can basically engage better okay and have a more effective campaign result out of that so i'm going to share with you an example of how you do real time optimization and engagement with a short video here i hope it works can you as owner operators of both Westfield and its out of home media network, we are in a unique position when it comes to digital planning and buying within the Westfield Living Centre environment. QVD is the leading audience and campaign intelligence platform for digital out of home. In Australia, we have been powering the Westfield Smart Screen Network for the past five years. When we were first approached to do this, we were very excited that this was the first time that this type of technology was going to be tested in Australia. In partnering with Quividi and Optus for this effectiveness study, we now have tangible evidence that we are capable of engaging with specific audiences in the most effective way. Our solution is able to detect whether the audience approaching a screen is male, female, younger, mature or a family. We design the scenario to maximize the window of opportunity to trigger in real time the relevant ad to the right audience. The campaign has exceeded our expectations with real time optimization driving a measurable increase in views, engagement and efficiency. Working in partnership with Brandspace, we were able to really dig into how each of those demographics responded to the targeted content. That's really valuable insight that helps us fine tune our strategy moving forward. So the lady you see here on the screen, Angela, she's actually the marketing director of Optus, which is a number two telco company in Australia. She is the budget owner of all the media budget, TV, print, uh, out of home, etc. And actually, after this campaign, she decided to sign a yearly advertising contract with Westfield to advertise every day on Westfield Network, just because she can, after every single campaign, see whether or not she managed to increase, like she said, engagement, views, and efficiency. So Westfield signed a multi-million Australian dollars contract with Optus after that campaign. So that's, I would say, a concrete example of how you generate, gener make your impressions worth more than what you used to do. So you could also do experiential, okay, at scale campaign in a very easy way. So that's an example of Postoscope in US running a GMC interactive campaign, driving 50% more traffic to the store during that campaign. Or if you're a marketer and you, ha you are Westfield, you want to give access to, uh, you know, in US to Chanel, Netflix, or Optus in Australia, a marketing team can access the data to see how each campaign, how each creative inside the campaign resonate or not with different audience groups so that it feeds their thinking about, I mean, marketing strategy and how to improve their campaign moving forwards. So I'm done here, and before I finish, so just would like to give you three uh, key takeaways that I invite you to uh, bring back for food for thoughts. Okay, the first one is what we see is Pidu and in-store retail media are the two major growth drivers in our space globally, and they will enable networks to tap into incremental omni-channel budget, but that will require higher fidelity data than what, I mean, uh, some of us are giving today. The second uh, key takeaway is what I just described now, I mean, here is not something that will happen in 10 years. It's happening. They are network, best in class network in different markets, which are leading the way, and they've been using that to trade and transact every day. And, and, and basically, they've been using that to create new monetization models to generate more revenue, and also to prove and provide to their client advertisers more effective campaign. 
more engaging campaigns. And that's how they anchor those accounts. And last but not least, I mean, this is an opportunity, you know, for all the networks to get into that journey of transitioning from a purely slot-based to a more audience, you know, based uh, selling uh, models and maximize further the media revenue. And not doing that, it's a bit like going against the wind. So sooner or later, it's a kind of opportunity loss. So welcome everybody on board to that. It's a journey, it's progressive, doesn't mean that they have to switch 100%, that it doesn't mean that it has to be mountains of millions of dollars of investment right away. It's not how it happens in other places. So thank you very much. Merci à tous.